Hi everyone, welcome to the YouTube channel today. I'm Lori Whitlock and I am so excited to show you guys this brand new card base that we have. It's called a slice form pop-up card. Look how fun that is. These cards are incredibly cute, filled with wow factor. People are gonna love getting them and I think you're gonna have a lot of fun putting them together. They're all A2 size. They fit into an A2 envelope. This is a Valentine's one that we're going to put together in class today. Um, this is a cute little panda. Pops up with the darling little hearts all around him. And the front says, Happy Valentine's Day. We've got several birthday styles and several Valentine styles. And I just want you to know that all the pieces are interchangeable. So if you, for instance, wanted this um, happy birthday card to have a different icon inside. For instance, this is the set for the unicorn here, but you can slip out these pieces right here and just swap them um, it for a different set of pieces. Of course, you wouldn't probably wanna use the flower in front of that unicorn face. So you'd wanna slide in the pieces for the unicorn. Um, the stars in front of him work a little bit better. But you can turn this card from a little girl card into um, a card with the flowers for a mom or a friend. So you can see just how that changes it up. Uh, this one has actually the cute balloons that go behind. So much fun, huh? Okay, um, also with this set here, we have a little different embellishment for the front if you're doing the flower pieces, so you can swap out that front as well. So like I said, it could be for a mom, could be for a little girl with just a few swaps of the pieces there. Um, on our Valentine one, I've got several characters that you can put in. We're gonna be making the one with the panda today, but we've got lots of cute little characters that can go in this Valentine's card. Um, this one is the little puppy. Let's slide him in there. You just have to line up those grooves and slide them down. And this one has been swapped so many times it's a little bit wiggly. Look how fun he is. These would be really fun for kids to make for their friends. I think they would be um, like wowed by the cute cards that their friends can make that pop up in 3D like that. I've also got a set of birthdays numbers that you can put in the birthday cards, one through 100, all in one set. So be sure to pick that one up because you can use that for anybody's birthday. And I've got some really great icons on the birthday ones that are just simple. We've got um, balloons and presents and cakes. And let's just open all these up so you can see how cute they are. Birthday cake pops up on that one. The birthday presents pops up on that one. We've got a darling little dinosaur that pops up on this one. And of course our unicorn. And you'll notice that I cut all of these base pieces out of green. That's a cute technique too. So keep that in mind as you're making these. They don't all have to be white. You can do whatever you'd like. Um, and some of these swaps we've got other card base colors like brown and they look just as cute once you put those in as well. So you can see um, the little elephant. I'll just swap him in there really quick. Cute, huh? And it's okay that that's a brown layer that looks just cute. So let's get busy making this adorable card. I hope you guys love these as much as I do. I have had multiple requests over the last few weeks. Well, for several months now actually to create some of these cards. So I've had fun making them. I think they turned out really, really cute and I can foresee lots of card themes coming in the future using this style of card. So I hope that you love them as much as I have enjoyed making them. Let's get busy putting them together. So let's go ahead and get this cute card put together. So you've got all the pieces here in front of me. Um, we've got the card base and the front of the card base cut out the letter the lettering happy valentine's day or happy birthday or whatever the theme is and then we have this insert piece that's got these funny little cuts here on it and a score line in the middle and then we've got our insert pieces that are going to make our little grid slice form 
design. So let me just pull out the card again. So this portion right here, this is what all of these pieces are going to make. So we just need to layer those together and then hook them into these little funny pieces on the side. And that's how we create this card. It's actually quite easy. The only glue that you need is to layer your pieces here and to put your card base in and then assemble your little front embellishment. And then also, if you'll notice, those letters do lose their middles. So you'll wanna hang on to those. I did that here on my cutting mat. So I kept all the lettering. It's pretty easy. The card base just comes apart from those pieces. And then you can glue those back in place after we assemble the front of our card. So if you don't want them, you don't have to. Like it's cute like this. But if you want those middles back in, you will have to glue those in individually. So let's go ahead and put together this center section first. I'm just going to go ahead and move these other pieces off to the side for a minute. And right now it doesn't require any adhesive. So it's really, really simple. Um, these three center pieces here are the ones with our embellishments and everything else I've just cut out of a plain um, color of cardstock. So I'm going to start by putting my middle pieces and we're going to crisscross them. And if you'll notice, I'm going to bring up the card one more time. If you'll notice on our card base, I have decided to have it open where the graphics are kind of facing this panel over here. You could set it up where they face the other way. So you'll want to pay attention to that. It just depends on where these little clips end up being. So if they ended up here and here, we'd have to rotate the whole card and it would be here. And then all these decorations would be facing the other direction. So hopefully that makes sense. I kind of wanted it facing this way so that if you have a sentiment here, it reads that way. I feel like it opens up and it just feels right when it goes that way. Hopefully that makes sense. Um, but there's really not a right or a wrong way. That's just the way I chose to do it. So in that case, I do want my panda facing this direction. And then right in front of him would go uh, these hearts. And then behind him goes the larger hearts. And that's our three center sections. Really quite easy so far. Just got to crisscross those and interlock the slit sections. And then on either side, of, so you notice that hump that went through the middle, that was the largest one. And then on either side, we have this size. They are exactly the same. And so it doesn't matter. They're interchangeable. And they just interlock in on either side of that center section. So this is the trickiest part, getting all of these layered. But once you get them in, pretty slick how it works. Okay, we have this one to put on on this side. Ah. Let's see here. Maybe it helps to flip it upside down here. There we go. Whoops, I got it in the wrong holes. Got to scoot over one section. Just got to get those lined up just right. Okay, so now we have our three center sections going in either direction. And we need to put in our, our clip sections. So as I mentioned before, if you want those clips to end up over in this corner, you need to orient them where they end up over here. If you, if you orient them the other way, they'll end up here on this side. So I'm going to orient them here and here. So let's, we're going to take this bottom one and go come up from the bottom. So I find it easiest to put these in last. That way you can control which way they're facing a little bit easier. And this one's going to come, let's see, right down from this direction right here. Okay, make sure you start on the right area. Okay, and there's a tiny little one here at the end. Don't miss that one. Okay, 
So you notice there's a tiny little section there. So our clips ended up right here on this front right hand corner. That's exactly what I want. And then we need to do the same thing over on this side. So we're going to come up from the bottom and we want them to end up back here, opposite corner. We don't want them both up front. We want them all in the opposite corners. Okay, while I was holding that up, that slid a little. Okay, so now we're going to come up from the bottom on this section. I'm just going to flip it over. I think that'll help. Oops, make sure you get started on the right area. Okay, right there. Okay, and then the table can kind of help you push everything down. And then, so that is turning out the way we want it. I want the clips here and here. So then we just have this last back section to put in. So we want the clips to match up. So make sure you get it oriented the right way. If you do it that way, you'll end up having to take it out and reorient it. And that one went in nice and easy. So there we have our full mechanism created. This is basically a grid card that we've been putting together the last few weeks that I've designed. And then this new clip system helps us put it into the card base. Isn't that fun? So cute. So let's get our card base ready to go. We have these two little U pieces and you're probably wondering what those are for. I'll show you what they're for here in just a little bit. We've got our cute little panda. I'll just leave him there so you guys can see that. And again, here's the card just so you can kind of see what we're doing now. We're gonna get this white piece ready to go inside of our card base and get our card front um, finished up. Okay, so this is our, these are our two card bases. You're just going to take that front piece and just fold that right in half. And I like to use a bone folder to get a nice crease on that. We're going to fold that insert right in half. And I'll tell you a little trick on this card base. If you want to fit two of them on an eight and a half by 11, what I did with my silhouette is I just set one up right at the top of my eight and a half by 11. I undid the compound path. So I released the compound path and I deleted the line down the middle and the outline and I just cut the happy Valentine's Day and then you could orient it twice on your mat once here and once here and as long as you set up your I, I had set up a 12 by 12 mat with eight and a half by 11 paper on it so here and here as long as you get this in the same position on each of those, you should be able to take your piece of paper off and then just slice down the middle and score down the middle. And you can get two card bases off of an eight and a half by 11. Or your other option is to scale the whole project down just a little bit, maybe 95%. And then you can get two off of an eight and a half by 11. If you're using 12 by 12 cardstock, it doesn't matter. You don't need to do anything fancy like that. That's just some ideas for you if you'd like to try and fit two bases on an eight and a half by 11 with your silhouette. <clears throat> I don't believe you'd be able to do that with your Cricut because they don't let you release the compound path. So right here, you'll see this funny little U shape. We need to fold that up and you don't want to fold in the wrong position. So use a credit card or something to help you fold right on that score line. You don't want to fold at the bottom of the T. You want to fold at the score line. So let me show you that a little bit closer there. Can you see how that looks? You've got to get the T and the whole base and get that folded correctly. And you need to do that on the other side as well. This is honestly the trickiest part of the whole card. Um, this little T mechanism here. Really, really important piece to hold this card together and it is a wee bit of a challenge to get this um, card into that, but we can do it. So I just like to, we're going to have to put those little clips. You can see those little, those little clips right there have ears on them so that they can slide inside those tees. And I've given you these reinforcements to glue onto the tees after you get it in because it might require a little bit of bending to get those pieces in place but once they're in they stay in really nicely so I'm just going to go ahead and 
put those pieces in place and bend those ears up and around my little pieces. And we definitely just don't want them to tear. That's the main thing. Okay. Okay, once you have that side in, and kind of just lay that down. Let's see, I got it in too far. There we go. Go back to those notches. And then you can go ahead and glue your little T piece in. This is, you don't absolutely have to have these, but I find that it helps give it just a little bit of reinforcement because you will be pulling on those ears as you open and close this card. But I haven't had any trouble with them um, performing. This will just let you slide those over and just glue that down. And I'm going to put a little extra glue down here at the base so that T glues down. And then I'm just going to fold that back on itself. This is, you know, this is making the card a little bit thicker. And I want to show you a trick just in case you want to do this. You could potentially pull out this piece and this piece and the card still functions completely fine. So if you're using a heavier weight of cardstock and you just don't like how thick it's getting, you could pull, like I mentioned, this one and this one out. So let me just demonstrate a little bit. I hate to pull it apart, but this piece here could be removed and it would still function just fine. And the same piece here. You need to pull those out before you put your card completely together. I did pull some two of them out with my card put together the other day and it worked, but I like the look of it in there. I think it looks more complete and really cute, but if you feel like it gets too thick, that's an option. Okay, so now we just have the trick of getting this last side together. So you literally just have to pull the, that T up and over that ear. I'm going to go the other way. Let's try the other way. It might help to have a little pair of tweezers right here. Okay, I got that one over. Can you see that? Now I just need to get this one in. So it really, really would help to have a pair of tweezers, but I don't have one right now, so I'll just have to use my fingernails. And there, oh, that one slid right in nice and easy. So now we have that one in and now I can glue this little reinforcement piece on. Put a little glue on that. And tuck that right over those tabs. Okay, I'm going to shut this for a second. Okay. That um, makes sure that that T gets glued down good. Okay, so now we have our card completely functioning here in the middle and we're ready to glue it into our card base because we don't want to have a hole in our card. And if you'll notice, I've placed all the lettering outside of the area where that hole is. So you can just see through to the white. Now, if you wanted to eliminate this cover, all you need is an 11, let's see, four and a quarter by 11 inch. So you'd fold it in half to be a four and a quarter by five and a half. And you could just have a plain card base and decorate it however you want. You do not have to use my card fronts if you don't want to, but you certainly can. So I'm just gonna show you how to finish it up with this card base. So I will tell you, leaving it free on this side is a lot better because it needs a little bit of wiggle room to open and close. And I don't think it hurts the look of the card at all. And just leave that 
flap not glued down. Of course, you have to glue the front down if you're going to use my lettering. So. so let's go ahead and fold our card in half and go ahead and put some adhesive on that. And we're just going to do the side with the lettering like we just talked about. I'm going to go around that hole really well. Okay, we have to be very careful because when I put this down, it's going to stick. So I'm going to line it up on the side that isn't going to stick down first, leaving about an eighth of an inch all the way around and right on the crease of the card base. Let's go ahead and close that down. And we have our working card. Look how cute he is. I just love him so much. So then out here on the front, let's get our happy Valentine's Day letters in place. So I probably should have a spatula for this, but let's use my hook. And I'm just going to show you what I like to do. I like to put the A kind of in place where it's supposed to be. Whoopsie, it flipped over on me. And then I'll have kind of a placement guide for that inner shape. Oh, I kind of flipped it over. So now i got to figure out which way it goes in there. I think it goes just like that. So... I'm going to put a little adhesive on this side. Okay, I think it flipped over again on me. Yep, let's go right there. Put a little glue on there. And we'll place that in place. Doesn't that work really nice? It makes a good little guide for our letter placement. Then we can go ahead and grab our A and pull it back out of there. Okay, and then let's get our P. Go ahead and put that P in place. We can even just use this P again as our placement guide. Um, when you're doing your adhesive on your other piece, you may want to put the adhesive on. Just be careful in this area not to have it overrun too much. I have some adhesive kind of behind there. It's holding these letter middles down okay, but um, you might want to avoid that area and do better than I did. Here's our second P. I think it's a lot easier to put these few middles in than it is to put down all the, all the lettering. So, And if you wanted to save these letters for something else, you sure, sure could. Okay, let's get the little A for Valentine's Day. Actually, think I've got enough adhesive behind there, so I'm just going to stick that down. And this A over here. You can kind of eyeball these too if you don't want to use these templates. You don't have to. Uh-oh. 
and RD. Okay, and then in each of the files, I've given you some embellishments to put on the front of the cards. So I've got, if you'll notice, there's little clusters of different things. Um, and on the Valentine's card, we've got hearts. So it's just a very simple little cluster that you can just place in there. And you can embellish it more if you'd like. I just wanted to give you a cute front that you could add to these cards that weren't too much extra work. That's the the thing about a pop-up card like this, you've got to have a front and an inside, and I know they can become a lot of work if, if they're too complicated. Okay, so at this point, you just go ahead and add your cute little clusters to the front here in the corner, and we have our adorable little pop-up, and you could certainly make some little print and cut sentiments or stamp inside um, to finish these off in any way that you would like. So I hope you guys love making these. I have been asked by several people to make them and I think they turned out fabulous and I think we'll be making more of these in the future. So watch for more themes. If you have any theme requests, please leave them here in the comments of this video. Look how fun all these are. Um, okay, I forgot to tell you, on this birthday one, I've given you all the numbers from 1 to 100 that you can slip in where that little dinosaur is. So, and I, here's a couple of them cut. I cut the 1 and the 16, so you can see how cute those are. But if you buy the file, you're going to get everything from 1 to 100, so you could use it for any birthday. And the cute little presents. So... These are so, so, so much fun. I hope you guys love them. I hope you have a great day and come visit me in another video. Bye-bye.